Hey guys, I'm Janet on occasion, and today we're playing another Total War Warhammer 2 Battle Replay. This one was sent in by Afan, and he's been on the channel for, for ages now. Um, yeah, we just every now and then I get a replay from him, and it's been going back months and months and months and months. Probably one of the first casts I put up was one of his, so it's great to see him still, uh, you know, still contributing. It's really cool. So always a pleasure to see you, man. Anyway, here you can see he has Sartorial. I, just, I love this guy. I absolutely love this guy. He's totally nuts. Absolutely terrifying. Anyway, uh, Law of Metal, very, very handy. So you can see tr Final Transmutation is basically a must. But he's also got the Plague of Rust, which is perfect when you have a huge line of Forsaken. Anything armoured in the way, Sunder the Armour, and the Forsaken's massive weapon strength will just see them through. It is beautiful. Also, you can see he's got a Scroll of Power to give him the extra um, ability recharge. Um, things we can cast more often, which is really nice. Also, Arcane Conduit and uh, Stand or Die, obviously. But he's an absolute pain to pin down, so absolutely beautiful. Just, he's a real terror. Unless you can pin him down with cavalry, you can't really stop him. He will just hop through your lines forever. But there is a Shagath here to scare off any cavalry, and there's also a Chaos Chariot to deal with even more infantry. There's a ton of Marauder Horsemen kicking around as well, um, as well as some Chaos Warhounds of Poison, so these will be able to outpace the Pistoliers just. And that might be enough to catch them, because they get gobbled up very quickly. But, there are Knights of the Blazing Sun guarding. So, uh, that, yeah, that's the whole army. Okay, so it's these two and uh, more hounds in the back. So, more Knights of the Blazing Sun on the other side. I really like Knights of the Blazing Sun. Really nice charge bonus on these guys. They're very cool. Also, here you can see Balthazar Gelt. So, it's metal v. metal, which is always interesting. And you often see that in this matchup, because they're both just so well suited for dealing with each other. Because you want to be able to sunder the armor. You know, if you're going with Forsaken, you need to sunder the armor of these guys. If you... Well, you know, and everything tends to be armoured for chaos, so it's always a good idea for the Empire to bring Gelt, really. Um, also, two Witch Hunters. The Witch Hunters are great if they can just tag-team stuff with Accusation. They're not great for killing Sartorial, though. He has very good missile and magic resistance, which means that their magic bullets barely do a thing. And uh, Accusation also gets nullified because it's magic damage, but the Shagath, he doesn't really have that luxury. He will hurt from uh, double Witch Hunters. There's also a couple of great cannons. These guys will be great at breaking these Marauder Horsemen very fast. They are very big targets, these guys, but they're basically all there is in terms of ranged. Back here, there's also a load of crossbowmen. These guys are nice and cheap, but if you're going to sunder the armor with Geld, then you're going to have a good day, you know? It's going to work out pretty well. So I like that a lot. Also, a ton of spearmen just bogging things down. So he's going to have to make a lot of use out of his, uh, well, Knights of the Blazing Sun. I was going to say his Pistol Ears, but his Pistol Ears, they're just going to faff about for a bit. They're Pistol Ears. But the damage will add up, you know, certainly against things like Marauder Horsemen that have very little armor. But the Knights of the Blazing Sun, it, they're going to have to be used so well to shut down all these Forsaken. They need to get constant charges in, make sure they stay away from the Shagath. If the Knights of the Blazing Sun don't get value, this is going to be very tough indeed. So, straight away a miscast from uh, Balthazar Gelt there, but he has used Plague of Rust upgraded, so minus 60 armor. These Forsaken are in a horrible, horrible way. But, Sartorial's in here doing some work. Knights of the Blazing Sun are definitely struggling. And a Plague of Rust has been used on the Knights of the Blazing Sun. Again, upgraded, so now nothing has any armor. Yeah, that's right. Back here, though, you can see, yep, Marauder Horsemen. Okay, I lied. There were more Marauder Horsemen, and they managed to sneak up here. So, yeah, they are getting pretty heavily shut down by the crossbowmen, but they've managed to wipe out these great cannons, and those great cannons are too useful. Look, one shattered there. One shattered. These guys need to run. Both shattered. Run. Run away. So, over here, Knights of the Blazing Sun still bogged down, and they have to get out of there. They have to get out of there, and spearmen need to just get in the way. But Forsaken are wrapping in from every side, but a lot of them are taking a staggering amount of damage, you know, mostly from the Knights of the Blazing Sun, but the Shagath has got into them now. You can see the Pistoliers are firing in, and the Shagath with 70 armor, Pistoliers, they won't miss many shots against such a big target. So it's not actually a bad idea to whittle them down with Pistoliers. So, more Marauder Horsemen uh, need to be brought back into the fight, but just so many, so many things just running into the rear and really causing havoc. It's pretty, pretty brutal. So Sartorial, he's had an accusation used on him, which I think is a mistake. You know, you need the knights on him. You need to keep the knights alive so you can get them on Sartorial. Here, though, beautiful rear charge from these knights into these Forsaken. And Spearmen are holding them at bay for quite some time. Glittering Robe giving them 90 armor. Very nice use of that. Very nice use of that. Don't often see that. And it's overcast, so all of this stuff has a ton of armor. And Forsaken aren't great at dealing with armor. So that's really nice. So Sartorial might be sundering armor with his spells, but Gelt is boosting the armor too, so it's very difficult to compete with that. So a lot of units spread out, needing to run back in. The Shagath, not being used to the full potential, he needs to charge in and start doing some hurt into these, you know, expensive units. 
But Gelt is all but dead. He is having a tough, tough time escaping any of these units. There's nothing to back him up right now. These Knights of the Blazing Sun need to be pulled out, and Gelt needs to be run towards them so the Knights of the Blazing Sun can intercept whatever's chasing Gelt. That's what needed to have happened, but Gelt just ran away. You cannot run directly away into nowhere when you have Marauder Horsemen chasing you. It doesn't matter if they catch you or not, they're going to do damage regardless, because they're going to throw javelins into your back. So uh, that is a very big shame for Gelt. That was terrible, terrible misplay there. Really costly, real unfortunate. But the Witch Hunters are still doing a fine job. See, the Shagath has taken some damage, and uh, there's still plenty of units kicking around. And these Forsaken just haven't been able to punch through this. With the buffs to armor, They've not done so well. The Knights of Blazing Sun have racked up a lot of kills. 70 kills there. And uh, where's the other? Where's the other unit of knights? Did they get dealt with? Did they get dealt with? I can't see them anywhere. Maybe they did. But they seem to be doing some pretty good damage to the Forsaken too. Forsaken are definitely struggling here. And now, you can see, Sothoriel has been taking quite a lot of damage. But, another Plague of Rust on these Knights of the Blazing Sun. And uh, the Shagath is in here. The Chariot's in here. There are Forsaken in here. There's a lot of stuff in here, is what I'm getting at. Uh, they're pretty bogged down. But they're going to get some good work done here. The Forsaken are struggling. The Forsaken are struggling. But they're going to have to get out of there. Let the Spearmen deal with the Shagath. Accusation on the Shagath, definitely worthwhile. That is really going to hurt. But if these Knights go, there's not really going to be much to deal with Sartorial. He could just jump through these Spearmen and Crossbowmen all day for very little, very little effort. Back here, though, you can see the Pistoliers are trying to keep the rest of the cavalry at bay. He can't just be sat there having javelins thrown at him, you know, and he can't use his own cav to chase them down. Well, his own, uh, you know, heavy cav, anyway. Um, he has to use the Pistoliers to wipe these guys out, or they'll be able to kite you around forever, and you can't have that. So, you see Marauder Horsemen, they're managing to chase off the Knights of the Blazing Sun, and that is a real pity for them. Uh, Chaos Chariot, just completely bogged down. It wasn't kept moving, unfortunately. It has to keep moving if it wants to stay alive. It's not that sturdy. So surrounded by spearmen, it will start to struggle. Also, the Witch Hunter seems to be shooting into him. Another Witch Hunter over there managed to scare off the last of the Forsaken, and there's still a lot of Pistoliers left. So what was looking very bad for the Empire a second ago is suddenly looking a lot better, because really, there's just a Shagath and Sartoria left. Everything else is in absolute disarray. So yeah, there's sure the odd returning unit, but none of them are that sturdy and there's still two heroes on the board that both have a lot of ammunition left and they can keep using accusations so long as they stay alive. So as long as they're kept safe and screened by this just horde of spearmen, it's going to be very difficult for the Shagath to really get in there and do some work. His anti-large isn't going to help against a small target like a witch hunter. And uh, Sartoriel, I mean, he doesn't really want to be hopping in too, too much. If he gets bogged down by the spears, he doesn't really have a lot of armor, so they will get some work done. Even though he can hop in and out, if they're all in one massive blob, it's very difficult to path, because the reason why he can hop around so much is his charge animation. So now that they're spreading out, this is actually worse for the Empire, because Sothor can jump in, hit these spearmen, and then target the next one, and he'll just hop and skip out of that combat and into the next one, so he's very difficult to pin down. If everything is in one blob, he can't then target something else to jump out of that combat. You know, he can't just do it by running so well. He has to use that charge animation to skip out of it. So the more spread out the Empire player gets, the better it is for Sartorial. Here though you can see the Shagath is getting really pinned down. <coughs> the pistol is charged in to try and stop him moving while everything else surrounds him. And that was really brutal. An accusation on the Dragon Ogre Shagath now. He is getting whittled down very hard. Pistoliers running off those Chaos Warhounds. There are still some Marauder Horsemen, and the Pistoliers have actually run out of uh, ammo here, which means now they're in that position where they just have to sort of um, take a lot of these Javelins. They can charge them, but the Marauders are going to win in melee against the Pistoliers, so that's a bit of a pity. And now they are charging in, but those Forsaken getting dealt with, and right now, Sartoriel is totally surrounded. But at final transmutation, I was not expecting him to be able to afford that this late in the battle, so leaving enough Winds of Magic for a final transmutation, it punishes the Empire for blobbing up, when before, you know, I said, I mean, I did say it, right, you blob up and you're better off against South Oriel, but with the Winds of Magic left spare like that, it was pretty bad, it was pretty bad, those spearmen have taken a beating, but they're still two witch hunters. And like I said, they can't do a huge amount of damage with their magic damage against Sartorial, but it will still help. It still adds up when they don't have any other decent targets, you know? They're still going to be a problem. They're still going to encourage the nearby units, and they will cause some problems. 
Now, though, after that final transmutation has been used, get everything. Just get everything out of South Oriel. Charge him with everything. Also, do these guys have slippery? No, they don't. They didn't bring slipperies. So they're not going to have any extra melee defense. So 34 is the best they're going to get against 60 melee attack. So they will get hurt a lot by South Oriel jumping in and out. Accusation. Not going to do much, but it'll do a bit. It'll do a bit. And like I said, no better targets for him. you got to do what you can at this point of the battle. Shagath looks like he is coming back. South Oriel, though, super injured. Only 1,500 health left. But he does cause terror. And you can see that... Well, no, he's no, he's immune to psychology, isn't he? He's a witch hunter. Witch hunters aren't going to get scared by scary things. That's their job. But they will still break. So these guys now getting terrified. Marauder horsemen throwing javelins to the back of them. That will affect their leadership, getting attacked by missiles. And that will allow terror to take hold a lot more effectively. The witch hunter trying to bob and weave. And it looks like he... Okay, maybe he didn't avoid that. He did just get knocked flat. Oh dear. So the witch hunter getting gobbled up. And Sartorial, so, so little health. These chariots could really afford to rear charge this stuff to help Terra, you know, take hold. Same with the Dragon Ogre Shagath. Just charge in. Sartorial's unbreakable at the end of the day, so you may as well make use of what units you have left if you're going to let Sartorial just take out everything, right? Uh, may as well get everything else involved, because it'll be just down to Sartorial in the end, and you can do this constant cycle charging with him once everything breaks. But everything is broken. So there we go. Pyrrhic victory. So yeah, wonderful fight. South Oriel just being an absolute champ. 169 kills. Absolutely wonderful. But this was this was a really cool army, this. Both of these armies were really good. They both had great counters to each other. And I just loved that metal off. I always love seeing the two, you know, sort of uh, metal wizards go at it. You know, trying to get, sort of, get rid of armor on some things. Try and buff their own armor in other. I think it's really fun. It... It kind of leads to a lot of weird plays, you know, where you think, all right, I've got armor piercing here or whatever, you know, I don't need armor piercing here, then suddenly you do. So you end up with all these weird roadblocks that you don't really usually get just from those engagements, you know, so it's really interesting. It makes sort of prioritizing targets really confusing um, because you never know if, if you've picked a good target because they, that might change. That might change very quickly. So I think that's really fun. But uh, yeah, just beautiful screening um, going on by both players trying to keep each other away. I think Gelt just running off into the distance. That's what did it. You know, if he was able to stay alive more, if he was able to get the uh, Knights of the Blazing Sun in to charge whichever unit of Marauder Horseman it was chasing down Gelt, you know, that could have changed things. That could have changed things very quickly. For one, it would have kept the Knights of the Blazing Sun out of that horrible mosh pit. And uh, yeah, it could have spared Gelt. You know, just a couple more spells could have swung it. Because uh, yeah, that Shagath took some crazy amount of damage from that double witch hunter. The double witch hunter is very good for dealing with things like that. So it's very cool to see. And these spearmen, they held out for an age against the Forsaken. Far longer than you'd expect. But that's what all the chevrons were for. And they really paid off. And with the extra robe lock of the uh, glittering robe giving massive buffs to their armor, suddenly they were really, really hard to kill. And you saw that, you know. Forsaken usually run through an empire line like this of just state troops. But they just couldn't. Knights of the Blazing Sun did pretty damn well, but... I think they could have could have been managed slightly better. They could have been managed slightly better there to get more cycle charging going. But it can be tough, you know, when you've got an army like this assaulting every possible direction. It can be very difficult, you know, but you don't want to leave them bogged down. But you also want to make the most use out of Plague of Rust, so... Oh, it's tough. It is tough, isn't it? But uh, no, no, you, you need to keep these guys alive at all costs. They're the only things that can pin down South Oriel, and that is the most important thing. Because, at the very least, he's unbreakable, so you have to kill him at some point. But he's also the spellcaster, so the quicker you kill him, the better. And he's so good against infantry that you don't want to just try and bog him down with infantry. Sure, it was whittling away at him at the end, but it would have been so much easier if he was just pinned in place. And unfortunately, he just couldn't do that after he lost his uh, Knights of the Blazing Sun. Because the Pistoliers, they just terrify away too easily. So yeah, yeah, a few, uh, few little mistakes there. But also, some really good plays by both players there. I think it was really interesting to see. So guys, if you enjoyed this, please do comment, like, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Have a good day, guys.